Hello to the chicos and the chicas. Welcome back. Round seven from the Norway Chess Classic. And today I have got an absolute banger for you. And even if you have seen the games, I'm going to guarantee you that I'm going to show you in this video stuff that will blow your mind. Before that, however, a little bit of a housekeeping. Please don't forget to sub, to like, to comment. And now also available is the super like down below, which is your way, one of the many, in fact, ways of uh, showing your support um, towards the channel and towards the content I'm creating um, for you. So please consider that as well. And without further ado, let's jump right into the Armageddon game between Vichy Anand, the guy who is supposedly retired, hello, and beats everyone like there was no tomorrow against uh, Rajabov. Uh, the opening is actually the Giacopiano, um, or Italian if you want me to be less fancy. And this particular variation with d3 and bishop g5 is actually nowadays more popular than the Peaky Blinders and Stranger Things combined. So this is just uh, the kryptonite of current chess. <coughs> Excuse me. And... Uh, Actually, to be fair to the system and the players who opt for it, unlike the Berlin, which is just as popular, this is actually chess on fire. It really tends to lead to very wild and complex positions. So bring it, pro players, bring it. Um, bishop h4, a5, knight d2, bishop a7, and castles. And this is where usually things go very hairy because g5 comes, which you could say compromises the situation of both. Kings. This guy will castle now into a very airy king side, but this one is feeling the heat with the oncoming pawns as well. All theory. And it's gonna be theory for a long, long while. In fact, here um, there was a Dominguez Carlsen game with knight f1, which the Cuban, now American, formerly Cuban grandmaster, actually won in a very impressive style, too. So I'm not sure why. Anand chose to deviate. I'm sure he had his reasons. There is a reason why his name has a GM in front of it and a 2750 after and mine doesn't. But um, we don't know the exact reasons. Anyway, the particular position that occurred on the board after Queen F6 appears to be very equalish um, when played correctly. Now, when I say appears to be very equalish, if you look at this... Um, about 2,000 chess-related words should come to your mind before the word eco enters the fray. Eco is what the engine will tell you this is. Um, messy, crazy, wild, utterly chaotic is what anyone else should call it, in my opinion. And I will join that club now and stir away from the eco. And that's, by the way, a very, very good example of why we should not be obsessing about computer evaluations. Bishop b5, trying to release or ease rather the tension here and increase the tension here by attacking the uh, defender of uh, that pawn, h4, g4. Perfect moves by both sides. In fact, all the fun stuff is going to come <coughs> at the very end of the game and in some parts in the what could have happened phase, really the game itself did not really show too much, but uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Bishop g4, tuck on c6, tuck back and queen a4 removing itself from the pin. Even now, if you look at the board, it's very difficult to tell who is attacking whom. But what appears to me to be now gradually clearer and clearer is that when it comes to the respective relative weakness of the two kings, it is actually the white king that is feeling the heat. And that's maybe not so surprising. Um, h3, bishop g3, the engine at first doesn't like it, but uh, it then doesn't come up with any clear refutations. A very human, logical move that after hg we can retake with the king and jump onto the h-file with the rock. Queen h6 was played, once again, all good according to the machine. Takes, takes, and here rook e3 still best by the engine. Now, first, let me show you what happened in the game, because that is going to put things in a little bit of a perspective for us, for the rest, which is going to be the real juicy stuff. Bishop d7, an awful 
absolutely awful blunder. Bishop d7 guarding a pawn that really should have been sacrificed in the first place. But also ignoring the fact that White's last move, rook e3, was a defensive slash aggressive measure on the third rank. And after bishop d7, knight takes e5, all of a sudden the black king is now caught with his pants down. Because after takes bishop takes e5, the queen is hanging and rook g3 check is a kind of a semi checkmate and the e5 pawn is brutally vitally important so you can't just pretend that yeah it's all good we will be fine because if we remove the e5 pawn all of a sudden this bishop becomes dead weight absolutely hopeless so Rajabov correctly took back and i think he must have mentally collapsed here a little bit having blundered all this by the way i didn't check his time only half a minute yeah very strange because here he had a chance to actually fight on I don't know whether he saw it or not, but after rook g3 check, he played bishop g4, which is really, really bad. Like, it's really handing the victory over on a platter. And after queen d1, he just threw in the towel and uh, walked away from the chessboard, obviously, after f5, ef5. Anand is going to regain the piece and in the ensuing position, even after queen trades, that endgame, like I said, with this bishop biting into granite, useless pawns, that endgame is hopeless. Rajabo resigned. Now comes the fancy stuff. So fasten your seat belts because what is about to come is going to be next level. So the first thing that made me wonder when I went through this game was that why didn't he try to play here now g5? Which seems like a much more logical move, right? And of course, I'm analyzing this with the engine. So I look up on the engine Eva bar and it says 2.9, which tells me that it's hopelessly dead lost. But I'm like, it's not that clear to me. Let's let's go. And I'm playing out the engine's line. And the more I play it out, the less I like it for white. Whilst the evaluation keeps on going up. Right? And I don't know how good a chess player you are when you're watching this. But when we get to this point, put your heart, hand honestly on your heart and tell me if you think that this is completely winning for white and you can clearly see how. Because when we got here, my initial feeling was that, hang on, who is winning? Try again? Like what? Like the bishop is pinned, right? Okay, I do get that there is a motive here that white can play for without too many dramas. But that is already quite a... <coughs> uh, what should I call it? Well, it's a very prudent way to play the game if you see all that here, right? So prudent was obviously a bit of a, <coughs> a euphemism for you are a sheer genius, no less, if you saw that. So once again, sorry, knight g5, bishop f6 here, take, 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 f6. Now, I didn't check king g2, and actually it loses to queen e2 check, so hello. And the winning move, Ladies and gentlemen, and even as I played it out, I didn't get it at first. Queen c4. Which now, I understand the second reason behind the move, not only the first. The first one is the harder one, by the way. The second is it covers e2. So after fg, we have king g2 without allowing this. Yeah, but you will say, yeah, yeah, but what about if takes? Which is exactly what I did. Boy, oh boy, you know what? This is what. Checky. Boomski, baby. This is what this is. Wow. Boomski. That is a boomski. And lo and behold, checkmate. Hello? How good is that? And after king g2, black has no other moves because otherwise I go here. In fact, best is bishop h3. And after rook takes check check takes and king h2 and white wins the end game wow that is so cool by the way why do we have to take why can't we just go here take take check and now black is trying to sell the same trick <laughs> that i didn't even see wow king h2 king g7 and black wins mate Oh my god! How good is that? And so king h4 is forced. And now after king g7, queen e2, <coughs> white still wins the end game. 
but uh, obviously it's a lot cleaner if we sack on G8. Wow! Just wow! And if you think that this is crazy, then now comes the real story. So let's backpedal a little bit further back because of course I was very curious about what was the right way to continue instead of the blunder. And um, the engine's recommendation was F6, which I understood right away. It secures the E5 pawn, but I wanted to see the implications of this. And so I played out a line and the further I got into it, the crazier it got. And uh, I'm going to swing the board around now because you want to enjoy this. From Black's point of view, let me tell you that much. Ready? Brace yourself for this. Queen a6, king k8. Very obvious move as far as the intention is concerned. Rook here. Know that this is the absolute epitome. It is like a statue for my absolute favorite hobby horse for really low rated, really low rated, low rated amateur players. Initiative over material. Do not care about pawns. Now this line is gonna be that concept on steroids uh, on the 10th factorial. Check this out. Oh, power, sorry, it's, it's called power of 10 in English. Queen takes, no worries. Boss is bringing the rook. Queen takes, no worries. I'll bring the bishop. Queen d5, no problemo. I will bring the rook as well. You take, fine, I go here. This is like absolute insanity. Every step of the way, white captures a pawn, more or less. So let's go from here with f6. So that's one pawn, that's two, that's three, that's four, and that's gonna be... Okay, so here, I didn't want to play out this because I was curious about what the threat was. <coughs> so I wanted to play a null move just to see what the engine was gearing up for. Get ready. A3, bishop takes. Now it's minus nine. And if rook takes, knight g5. And if rook here, bishop a7. It is just breathtakingly beautiful. Like, this is the most awesome type of chess you ever see. Every single piece is in the attack. It is just a delight. Absolute delight. And for funsies, of course, I took this pawn because now white is... Well, let's cancel out these. So one, two, three, four, five pawns up. White is... Mate in three, check. Not like taking the rook. Uh-uh. Check, baby. Check. And now after rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, checkmate concludes the game. Easily, easily one of the best, craziest variations I've ever seen in my life, which I totally accidentally stumbled upon insane stuff and it's not even the end of it i think i found one more with queen c6 yeah queen c6 was also very cool ed <coughs> 90 bishop f4 hello not like bishop takes or you know blah no bishop f4 so that if takes then we have mate in two not the check oops so the bishop is immune yeah wait for it rookie one Rook f8, bring all the dudes to the party and also cover f6 because the idea is 9g5. Queen d5, 9g5. And again, at this point, the position got to such a, a really nice point that I thought, again, I wanted to see if we were ready to pull the trigger. So I played a pass. Best, best is e5, by the way. Or knight f1, both of which winning for black, by the way, but not by force. And now comes the real deal. Check. Wow. Takes. Takes. Takes back. We take. King f1. And after bishop takes, nothing can retake because of the mate on g2. And black has to, <coughs> excuse me, white has to sacrifice material in order to avoid the mates here and here. And black goes on to win. So these were, ladies and gents, some of the most insane variations that remained behind the scenes 
for this absolutely mental game that showed very little really in terms of what was played out on the board. But I think with the backup of these lines that I just provided, this sort of merged together into some absolutely crazy stuff, which is what we love chess for. So I hope that um, this presentation uh, brought this game a little bit closer to you and also hopefully opened your eye to how beautiful chess can be. And uh, I think it's only fitting that all this was done in a game played by the legendary Indian world champion, former world champion, Vishy Anand. I hope that he's retaining his current form. That means that uh, for the other old chess players of the world, there is still hope out there. Thanks for watching. I will be back with more soon. Bye.